Uh, good morning, afternoon, and um, thank you very much for the opportunity to present. I can see this way with the glasses on, but I can't see you, so I'm in a dilemma. <laughs> I'll go with looking at this, and I'll imagine what you all look like. Uh, so we're here on behalf of Letterkenny Institute of Technology to present on our proposal, uh, which is PDP for LYIT, an institution-wide approach to professional development for those who teach, which supports student success for students in higher education. Um, now we have a, a big team involved in this, but uh, we have a representative team today. So uh, our president, Paul Hannigan, is here. Paul Lynch, who is our uh, Students' Union president, so two Paul presidents, and Helen McGrandless, who is our Senior Human Resources Officer. And my name is Lynn Ramsey. I'm Head of Teaching and Learning at Lower Kenny Institute of Technology. So today we'll, we'll do our best to stick to the time. Uh, we'll give a quick overview of the, the project team and a summary of the project. Uh, we'll let you know the rationale, I suppose, for the project and uh, what we're going to do. We'll let you know how we're going to do it, what our methodologies and methodological tools are. Um, crucially, we'll look at the impact and the sustainability for this project beyond our own institution um, and for the sector generally. And then, obviously, we'd be delighted to take questions at the end. So I mentioned at the beginning that we have a, a, a broad and inclusive team for the project. Uh, this is a whole institute approach to professional development for uh, those who teach in higher education. And with our institution, that's not just the academic staff. A lot of our professional services staff also teach, and we have a number of part-time and on, increasingly online staff teaching. Um, so we wanted to reflect all of those uh, elements within the teams. And also we wanted to make sure we had buy-in from the senior management level, which is why the steering group looks the way it looks, and within the operations group, because our experience with professional development to date is while we're very good at an institution in getting through people big accredited pieces around teaching and learning, level 10s and masters in learning and teaching, um, we're perhaps less good at creating spaces for people to really trial and implement and refine and review that in a collaborative base within their, their professional practice. So I, I suppose that team reflects that. So the core team will be myself and the, the senior project academic who will recruit. Uh, in terms of the case study, which we'll talk about, we have a co the core team and also three academics from the School of Science, and we'll talk about what that looks like. They will be assisted by external support around the digital media, tr media training and also our in-house technical staff. Um, and in terms of the development of the PD implementation and monitoring plan, we're working very closely with uh, Helen Grandless from HR and Sue Henry, our HR manager, just to make sure that that looks and feels right. Uh, the operations group then has uh, representatives from two schools. We have a four school structure within Letterkenny Institute of Technology, and the plan is that two of the biggest schools, which is School of Science and School of Business, their heads will sit on that. Um, the VP will, will also sit there, the VP for Research, Equality, Engagement. Uh, and then crucially, in both groups, we'll have uh, representatives from the, the Students' Union. So the, the Student Union President within the steering group and our newly appointed Education Officer within the Operations Group. So uh, we'll talk about student engagement <coughs> as we go through, but student engagement is, is part and parcel of all elements of, of this project. So in essence, what we're aiming for is a sustainable and tailored professional development model for our institution, which is aligned to the national professional development framework and underpinned by student engagement or, or student partnership. We know from the evidence that what works in terms of professional development is something which is not one-off, which is not something which is unique to the individual, but still tailored to the individual, works in a collective way, and that impacts on student success. And there's no point in us investing in staff development if we don't improve the teaching and learning experience in the classroom and the student experience more broadly for students in Letterkenny Institute of Technology. So we have four components, um, and these will be the four main outputs. The development of an evidence-based professional development and implementation plan to develop appropriate methodologies and digital resources for effective individual and crucially elaborative, uh, collaborative uh, engagement with uh, professional development planning. We need to develop a framework to monitor um, what's going on in terms of teacher engagement. At the moment, we have a lot of staff activity. We monitor and extent what's going on that we fund. We're less effective at monitoring what goes on on an ad hoc basis. We're certainly not good at capturing what goes on afterwards in terms of impact in the classroom. So that monitoring piece is, is going to be crucial. And then finally, we want to make sure that we're evaluating what's happening. And part and parcel of that will be the development of a learning evaluation framework tied to student success. 
All institutions are required um, in terms of the performance compacts to develop a student success strategy by 2020. We've done some of the kick off work in our own institution. Um, we see this strategy working in parallel. Um, so we'll be using some of the KPIs uh, that, under the student success strategy to parallel some of the work in the learning evaluation framework. So the project's underpinned by three core values. Um, inclusivity in terms of being a whole institution approach. Um, we're a small institution, 4,000 students, 300 staff of those are 190 are academics. Our student body has increased dramatically in the last five years. Staff numbers have not increased dramatically as with all in the last five years and we have a very diverse student body. We exceed all of the national targets in terms of widening access and participation. So we have a, a very interesting diverse student body and that makes challenges for, for staff. Um, and also we know that the way students learn and engage with technology has changed dramatically. So. We're working with all of our, our uh, academics and all the staff who teach across our two campuses. Uh, our goal is to create a sustainable model. Um, we're not interested in, in getting money to do a bit of work and then leaving. This has to be something that creates impact and lasting impact, both for our own institution and for more broadly within the sector. So it aligns very closely to uh, national commitments, but also institutional commitments. And Paul can talk a little bit more about the strategic plan and the, the commitments we've made under the performance compact, if that is helpful. Um, and at the heart of everything that we're doing really is student partnership. Um, I talked about the students being members of the steering and operations group. Paul's been part of the development of this project. Um, students will be active participants, uh, participants in the case study. They'll be part of the groups to uh, evaluate the data. Uh, we have done a lot of work in our last project, the Teaching and Learning Champions project. We're just closing out on that, where we had student partnership underpinning everything that we did. Um, students were members of the teams. Uh, what we learned was we had to do a lot more than that. Uh, we learned from our work from NSTEP that if students are going to be active participants, we need to work with them in advance of all the meetings. We meet with them now and say, here's the agenda, is there anything you want to add? Here's the documents, is there anything you don't understand in that? Uh, and we do it on a rotational basis, so our current president term of office will be up, a new team will come in. We have a methodology now for doing the handover and bringing people up to speed. Uh, what we didn't get a sense of is really what students think and feel on an ongoing basis. So we want to include the possibility of reverse mentoring in and through the project. So every member of the operations group, every member of the steering group will be offered a, a student mentor. And equally, the students who are mentored will be offered a senior academic mentor, or we've been having a chat with students, they might be interested in an industry mentor or a community development type mentor. It depends on where their interests in terms of their own professional development lie. But we think that will create a situation of an ongoing dialogue where we'll have true priority of esteem <coughs> in terms of how the project fleshes out. So, in terms of the, the how we're going to do about the what, <laughs> these are three-step approach uh, where we'll identify the professional development needs of all our, our teaching staff. At the moment, we have a system, and again, Helen can talk about this in more detail, where it's somewhat ad hoc. Uh, staff make a request through their head department, and it's funded to an extent by HR. There's also a budget at departmental level. But it's the people that put the hand up all the time who come forward, and there's many staff with professional development needs that we don't know. So the first stage will be the development of a questionnaire. It will be somewhat based on the existing questionnaire we developed under Teaching and Learning Champions. Uh, and that will allow us to cross-reference uh, what the managers thought against the whole staff approach to teaching and learning, which in and of itself will be interesting. Um, we will also work uh, in a detailed case study, and I'll, I'll uh, dive into that in a bit more detail in the next slide. But the idea of that is to develop a professional development practice and implementation case study. Because what we know is that staff don't always get the try time and space to practice the things they've learned on the professional development courses. We know that from our own research that we did in advance of our last Teaching and Learning Champions project, where we surveyed the staff across four institutions in the West and Northwest about staff who were undertaking PhDs. And we said, what are you most concerned about? And what they said was, we had two concerns. One is that we won't be able to carry on with our research afterwards, because we'll be so busy when we get back. And the other is that my head of department or line manager doesn't really value what I do. So we need to have a way of finding space to embrace and provide opportunities and interrogate what the barriers might be to making that sustainable change to trialing it out particularly on a collaborative basis. So that's why we want to focus on the case study. And then when we gather the data from the questionnaires and the case <coughs> studies, we want to bring it back to different cohorts of focus groups to interrogate that data to see what works, what doesn't work, what does it look like if I'm a new member of staff? What do you think the barrier might be to you? That I'm so busy and I really don't know what I'm doing and I'm terrified. I imagine that was my barrier. Um, 
uh, if I am a graduate of our Masters in Learning and Teaching, I might have different challenges. If an, uh, an IT staff, I might have different challenges. And we really want to understand what the students think of the data that's come back. Has it surfaced what they think are the development needs? Okay. So we're going to develop that again and interrogate it again through the focus groups. So the case study, we wanted to work with a group of staff that we have uh, from our Masters in Learning and Teaching. We're in our third year of the Masters in Learning and Teaching and we're very thankful to colleagues, see colleagues from Dundalk here, where we've worked in the past through their Masters in Learning and Teaching project. So we have a lot of staff who have this type of qualification and who have developed a research element within that who may have never done anything with it afterwards. So I was lucky enough to, to be second marker uh, for a colleague who did the, the Bring Your Own Device case study. Very simple technique uh, for vet nursing students. They do a lot of OSCEs, you know, the observation of uh, a stuffed rabbit, and then someone comes around with the board to, to assess how you're getting on. Um, it's very nerve-wracking for students. What they have to do is practice and get feedback, and ideally to, to be able to centre their own learning and feedback from their own learning. So our colleague Tina Purnell developed a piece of work through her Master's in Learning, uh, uh, Master's in Learning Teaching dissertation where students use their own phone to record in, in pairs of three. There's some technical issues that have been identified that were problematic. There's some staff support issues that were problematic. There's some data gathering and evaluation issues that were problematic. But in essence, we know that the students who, were, uh, who took part in that really felt it enhanced their ability to absorb feedback and improve their practice. So we think it's a lovely model that we can share across other areas and we have colleagues in science who would be interested in doing that, taking that case study and working with Tina as the lead. So it's a collaborative approach, but what we know is it's hard to find time, it's hard to find the digital resources and it's hard to find the space to capture and this project should help us do that as a case study and then we might share some of the learning uh, from that. Particularly we're interested in, in what, how we can capture the digital supports, uh, capture the student self-evaluation and how the staff are learning themselves. And again, we use some of the learning from Teaching and Learning Champions when we used our own VLE for the blog to capture the teacher self-evaluation elements of that. So in terms of impact and sustainability, um, we're interested in both qualitative and quantitative metrics uh, for this. Um, first and foremost, we want to ensure that there's greater engagement with the National Forum Professional Development Plan. When we started out with the Teaching and Learning Project, um, Teaching and Learning Champions Project, one of the first things we did was we asked staff, what do you know? And the answers were, were variable, and these are managers and senior managers in the institutions. So we have the benefit of being through that project at least, but it'll be interesting to see where our staff are now, as opposed to where they'll be in 18 months in terms of awareness uh, of the, the, uh, the framework. But it's really to engage in that framework, for you to understand as a lecturer in biomedical sciences where you sit in the framework and where you might progress over a five-year period, say. Um, we want to make sure that all elements of the, the uh, PDP are, are a core part of business in LYIT. Um, Increase engagement with staff in teaching and learning right across the board, and that's that monitoring piece, and enhance student success. And crucially, we're going to align it with our work on the student success strategy. So we started with three schools, uh, working with Leo Farrell through DESI to talk about what student success looks and feels like. We're getting very different I suppose, sense of what it looks like in different schools much more sense and employability in some schools than others and so on. So it's nuanced already what we're seeing from the academic side of the house. Uh, we have another school to work with and then we're going to work with the students as separate groups and then we'll start aligning some of that work with some of this work. Um, obviously all of the resources created under here, digital resources, the questionnaire and so on, will be available for everyone um, under open access principles. So in essence, this is what we have. A whole school approach which is tailored and evidence-based. Um, we're going to develop resources aligned to the professional development <coughs> framework, some of which already exist, some of which we've been trialling, for example, the mentoring piece. We know we have a, ma a master's in learning and teaching where we can create bespoke staff development, small pieces of accredited learning, and that's an option for us if, if things come back. We have to have a way of celebrating staff success as well as student success. So there has to be a staff engagement element to all of this. 
um, and that's part and parcel of, of what the implementation plan might look like. Um, we didn't present an implementation plan to you today because we want what we do to be evidence-based, but we have a sense of what some of those elements will be like. It'll be about freeing up time. It'll be about creating resources. It'll be about changing culture and having management buy-in for everything that we do. And absolutely, it has to be about celebrating staff success, particularly in an organisation like ours with a flat structure where people don't tend typically to move from one organisation to another, but have careers as professional teachers for life. How do we celebrate and uh, support that? And I see Terry out of my eye. So, and these are the, the sustainability elements, the monitoring, the learning evaluation uh, uh, framework, and crucially, the student success strategy. Thank you very much. I got the button. Ooh. No, no, no.